Well, it's the holiday season, and one of the favorite things people do during the holidays is see a performance of the Nutcracker. Here to tell us about a performance of the Nutcracker in a little bit different manner is He Cha Poos. That's right. Hopefully I said that correctly. She is with a radical application of creative energy, which is race, as you see behind us, which is a dance company. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. I feel like we've Happy had this be conversation here. before. I, something tells me we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna cover things. Absolutely great to <laughs> great to meet you. And we talked about the Nutcracker, and, and it is one of those fam family favorite events for people to see. But you're putting a different spin on this. We are. Um, we are doing the hip hop Nutcracker. Why the hip hop Nutcracker? Um, why not? I mean, good, good pe answer. people sure. uh, people love hip hop music. People love hip hop dancing. Uh, we wanted to put a flair on it. We wanted to uh, bring it up to date. So what direction are you taking the nut Nutcracker storyline? Um, the storyline is similar, but we, we wanted to, you know, we're working with a lot of the public schools for this show, so um, I wanted to bring it to a level that they could relate to a little bit easier. And kids just in general, um, with pop culture nowadays, um, I, I changed the, the main character from Clara to Carlos, a boy. Um, the family's not this perfect nuclear family. It's, it's you know, a lot of us relate now with, with single family, so we have that, that structure. And then um, instead of going to some of the, the lands that they go to, the Sugar Plum and all those areas, we go to the land of possibilities. We go to the land of uh, hidden treasures. So it has a similar structure, but the storyline is completely different. Gotcha. We all know the score is Tchaikovsky and the, uh, the traditional Nutcracker. What's your... Um What's your baseline on this? Um, we have two guys named Ben and Chase from Starship Playground um, produce a lot of the music. Some of the music we brought in ourselves, but uh, they produced, they took some of the Tchaikovsky and, and underlined it with beats and made some really, really cool adjustments to it um, to create a soundtrack for us to follow. Tell me about Carlos. How did you find Carlos? And we, how did you think, you know what, instead of Clara, we could do Carlos, and then how did this come together? You know, that's a good question. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> things just come and sure. you have to go with it. So um, I met a, a guy named Dominic uh, four, five years ago, and I just I knew he was going to be the star. And unfortunately, Dominic is now like seven feet tall. He just grew up. <laughs> he was just, he just, and so he's too. No one saw this coming. He's taller than the Nutcracker, and he's too <laughs> tall now. So we decided to make, make it a fun deal and cr find our new Carlos. And so we're actually filming a documentary with documentarian Jake Kelly, okay. and we are uh, creating a documentary called Finding Carlos. And it's um, going into the Oklahoma City area and finding um, a boy who dances. And, and taking that the same journey almost that Carlos does and, and finding himself to be able to come and star in this show. So we had an audition in September and found um, a guy named Victor who is just an absolute sweetheart and he's working with our new Nutcracker and a new mom this year and they've formed a, a family and they're working together and, and you'll have to come to the show and see how it turned out. And you can come to the show. The Nutcracker is uh, December 11th and 12th and the 13th, the 11th and 12th at 8 p.m. 13th, it's 2 p.m. It's at McGinnis High School. You have a yes. GoFundMe site to help out uh, raising some funds, right? We do. Um, it's GoFundMe slash race uh, in caps, our ACE dance company. And um, if you, it'd be a great thing to donate for the kids, for the company members, for the facility, everything that goes into the production. Uh, speaking of the kids, uh, you've been working with the local high schools mm -hmm. in this production. Yes, we have um, six local schools. We have uh, Putnam City North, U.S. Grant, Capitol Hill, uh, Northwest Classen. Um, I've seen some John Marshall here John Marshall and Centennial. And Centennial, which is a middle school. And they're absolutely precious. So what's the, what's the timeline on this? Uh, we all see the Nutcracker in December, but there's a lot of work that goes in in advance. Yes. In September, we have auditions. Um, we had members of race and the leadership team go into the schools and audition the kids. And then we just started working with, the, with them uh, either once a week or two times a week. And they learn the dances. They learn, you know, professional, um, what, what it takes to put on a produ production of this size. Uh, they learn about each other. They hold each other accountable. It's, it's a really, really fun experience for them. Well, tell me more about race, the radical application of creative energy. When did you start this? How big was it then? How big is it now? Um, it started with an idea about eight years ago, um, just an idea of bringing professional dance to Oklahoma City that's, that wasn't uh, ballet-centered. You saw a need for that. I, I did. I, was, I teach at the University of Central Oklahoma, and, um, and 
saw that a lot of dancers were graduating and just around the city I saw a lot of talent here in Oklahoma and saw that that they weren't doing a whole lot with their dancing if they if they didn't go to the coast so I wanted to create an outlet for them to be able to have professional dance here but also to bring dance to the public so that they could come to a show and see it there's just something about it being live and in action that, th that there's a tangible reward that's more than just watching it on video or television. So how big is Race now? Um, we have four companies. We have a, a junior company that we just started this year, um, ages 11 to 14, I believe. And then we have a teen company, 15 to 18. We have our, our main race company, uh, which is right now all women, but we're open to, to, to men as well. We do all the genre, jazz, contemporary, hip-hop, any kind of dancing that is necessary. And then we have a men's company that's all hip-hop um, right now. We're going to train them to do others as well. But What's your favorite style? What do you like uh, best? That's hard. Uh, I love, I love hip-hop, of course. Um, I think I love taking ballet class just yeah. because it, my body doesn't really um, form to it well, so it's challenging for me, and I love that challenge. But that's the thing about dance is you, I, I'm 45, and there's not a day that goes by that I don't learn something about the, the, the genre or um, a dance um, video that you can watch that just goes, wow, I didn't know that. I mean, there's just, it's an interesting thing that you will always learn something. How did you get started in dance? I knew you were going to ask this. So uh, back in the day, the Oklahoma City Cavalry. The Cavalry, yes, the CBA. Semi, yeah, that's right. Um, had a dance team called the Sundancers, which was directed by Cece Farha, who had a studio. And I met her uh, through auditioning for that. And she said, why don't you come train? And had, so- Had you danced before this? I, I cheered and, 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 well, I thought I danced because I would learn Janet Jackson videos. But <laughs> the, the training was not there yet. So I, I, I followed under her and started training and then um, did some shows in Lyric uh, sure. with music theater and then I did some shows in Los Angeles and worked there for a while and then I traveled all over and taught and and did different shows in other places so and then I came back home because home is just where I wanted to be. You've done some teaching at Oklahoma City University and now you're at the University of Central Oklahoma. What all do you teach there? Um, mostly jazz and hip-hop and some career preparation classes and actually really really interesting fact in the spring I am teaching two classes at the ACM Oh, very nice. Yes, yeah. I'm teaching movement for musicians and uh, beginning hip hop for musicians as well. So, movement for musicians. What That's is, right. So, if you're the bass player in the band, instead of just standing there, you should. Have, no, it's, it's, it's not that. Really. It's getting them comfortable. It's mostly the lead um, sure. singers to to comfortable to be able to find their own style and their own rhythm. Well, and that not makes be sense scared. because they have to be entertaining. Exactly. And exactly. And just get, being comfortable in their bodies. So. Very good. So what's next for race? What else do you want to do? Um, well, ultimate dream would be to have a building somewhere in the downtown metro city area. Um, we're obviously a, we're a nonprofit, so we're constantly looking for ways to be able to uh, be sustainable, but also have. I would like to be in a building because if we had our own building, we could offer classes to anyone. I mean, I could teach you how to dance. If you gave me two classes, I could teach you. So we need a facility for that. <laughs> you um, need a big facility for that. <laughs> <laughs> we're fortunate that we have, um, you know, the school lets us use their space and um, CC lets us use her space. But if we would love a space that we can call home that our four companies could rehearse in all the time and that we could do programs for these schools after school. I mean, there's just, there's lots of plans. We just, we need a space. If anybody wants to donate one for us. Well, if anybody is out there seeing this and they're interested, how do they contact you? How do they get involved? We have a website, uh, racedance.com. Um, and so all of our information is on there. We also have fan pages, um, Race Dance at Facebook, uh, Race Dance Co. at Instagram. Um, we also, or you can just, you know, find me through the website. We have the, we have the GoFundMe right now for Hip Hop Nutcracker that we're doing. Um, it is GoFundMe slash race, uh, in all caps, dance company. So there's lots of ways to help. I mean, being, being a nonprofit here is challenging, but it is always, it's also the way that we can uh, keep it um, with the right intention and, and sure. making sure that we're doing it, everything the right way. You can go see the Hip Hop Nutcracker again. It's December 11th, 12th, and 13th at McGinnis High School. 
tickets in advance are $18, they're $23 at the door. Hey, it's great to meet you. You too. Congrats on everything you've done so far. Uh, perhaps the best of luck to your students studying finals this week at UCO. Yes, yes. They're All doing right. great. So. And best of luck with the Hip Hop Nutcracker and happy holidays. Thank you so much.